I mean, we've, we're clearly you know, dominating the news. I mean, there wasn't much uh, in the tribunal. Uh, uh, Blitzarves from Geelong got done for diving and, and uh, staging, so he got a fine for that. Um, there's, there's just not much else. Collingwood, a little bit of uh, uh, pressure on Bucks just because they've actually just gone, on, just gone under the uh, gone under the radar and also have lost, I think it's three out of the last four or four out of the last five or something like that. So they're just... A, but everybody... Everybody at the moment is flying under the radar because we are just front and centre. Yeah, every yeah. football show, every article, every tweet, every, everything is yeah. about us. Yep, yeah. uh, it is. And uh, I reckon Nathan Buckley is the happiest man going around right now yeah. because had it yeah. not been for us, he'd be right under the blowtorch. And the other club that's not under the blowtorch is bloody Melbourne. What the hell's oh, going no, on there? They actually, should be absolutely getting hammered, but, you know. Yeah, but that's because no, that's nobody's actually their fan base. Uh, or anyone that is their fan base it doesn't, is under, is too old to be able to operate Twitter. How <laughs> uh, <but, laughs> poor old bloody Bolton, Philly. If only this had come up at the, at the time he got sacked, he might have got, got you know, skated through for a few. <laughs> <laughs> I guess we could, what we could do quickly is just run through a little bit of the selection of, of stuff that's been going on. I mean... We've had everybody, all of the all of the key players from the Crows, of course, have been fronting the media. And, um, you know, there's been some really, really encouraging stuff, like um, Chappie being interviewed on 5AA, thinking and, and, and letting Rowie and Bix know that, it, uh, that the performance against Carlton wasn't really that bad. No, it wasn't that bad. Um, hey, Brad, hey, what, hey was, Pete, get right into that microphone, mate. Wasn't really that bad. And then you've got, um, I know um, Andrew Fagan was... Uh, Interviewed on ABC and uh, at breakfast, and he said, "Come on, you, you know why? Why all the fuss? Because we're, just because we've lost three games, um, and, and there's just, they're just a complete, you know, disconnect um, with, with the, the issues that uh, the, the supporters are, are concerned about." And you know, where Don Pike was on AFL 360, um, yeah, you know, that was nothing. Just, it was just a fluff piece. Uh, and um, Tex Walker on radio, so all of, all of the cows and all the key players, Tex Walker's come out and, you know, we're all 100% behind the coach, uh, even though Tex wasn't at the beer and pizza night, apparently. Oh, was he? Uh, no. Oh. So um, he didn't, for whatever reason, I don't know why that was, but he wasn't there. Peter, um, you're so... very quiet, so you need to speak right up, mate. Keep going. Uh, is that better? <laughs> no, not I really. Get, uh, I get... I get tied off for shouting. Nah, um, it's just your yeah. microphone's quiet, so I don't know whether you got a volume button on it or something. No, it's unusual. Never had that issue before. But anyway, so that's a little bit of a selection of what's been going on. There's um, all the key players out there trying to douse this fire, but very, very difficult because the one person in the media who appears to really, really have an agenda and really be driving this is Stephen Rowe at 5AA, and it's unusual usually the clown and doesn't normally drive something like this but at the moment he is he is driving this like a bus yep and quite rightly so at the moment the, all those players that you're talking about pete they're all singing to the same hymn book uh they've obviously sat down and this is what you have to say to the media and it's uh, you know the uh, the chapman just take the chapman one how disgraceful that was i mean it was absolutely disgraceful. Uh, disgraceful. It just shows how far up their asses they've got their heads. Because uh, <laughs> I mean, seriously, it, there's 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 crisis going on around this club at the moment. There's the supporters have had a gutful, and they, they could cost them a bloody fortune in terms of money, in terms of uh, their uh, their their standing in the football community. They're looking like a joke at the moment. And Chapman comes there firstly, as you quite correctly said, Pete. He said, you know, it wasn't all that bad. You know, we, we didn't play all that badly. And uh, you got the other idiot saying, Fagan, you know, saying, what's all the fuss about? I mean, yeah. this is clueless stuff. And then poor old Rowie, who is trying to do the right thing, he intimated the fact that uh, Rue's mates are getting the, 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 the positions there and that we were promised uh, the best football department in the competition and we certainly haven't got that. We've got Rue's mate. And Chapman turns it on Rowie, who isn't smart enough to work out, out what's going on, says to Rowie, you know, are you intimating that Rue would, you know, sacrifice... I don't the like that mates? line. I don't like that line. They fed us that line when we went and uh, went and had a chat with a Macca. And uh, yep. 
that is the that is the biggest most passive aggressive thing they could possibly say it's such a deflection instead of it's exactly in, instead of answering the question they come out with oh surely you must trust you know mark Rashido, blah 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 i mean come on let's get talk about facts the point is that roey can honestly say uh that rue may have thought that he was doing the best thing at the time mm. but he didn't the whole point is you, you're you're actually trying to talk and make it about Rue's honesty. We're talking about the football department, the quality yeah. of the football department. It is, you know, it's a crap football department. You've got a dickhead running it in Burton who was not qualified for the position, not none whatsoever. And then he puts his mates in as well. I mean, the it it is the one of the weakest football departments in the competition. And Fagan, he's got to take responsibility because he covers up for it because he has an internal review instead of external review. The only thing I think out of the five double A interview and Rowie really cracking it at uh, Chapman is that Chappie just might order an external review. Well, we just got to keep hammering, hammer, 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 external review, external review, external review. We and- all of us just have to hammer constantly. And, you know, it's probably a good time to mention for those uh, few people that may not have caught up with what's been going on, the AFL Crowcast uh, started up a uh, petition on Sunday night. Uh, it's not really... it's I'd almost call it an open letter to the club more than a petition, uh, but we are seeking signatures for it, obviously. Um, and we're not we're not being stupid about it. We're not calling for everyone to quit and all that sort of stuff. What we're asking for is a full, transparent, top-to-bottom external review of the club uh, conducted by independent people. Um, the I think the supporters of the club, uh, members and, and fans alike, deserve to understand why certain decisions have been made and deserve to have some sort of transparency about what the plan is going forward. Because... Uh, from the outside looking in, uh, it, it feels like a boys' club. It feels like they're very insular and very dismissive of, of, of the average, you know, fan. And uh, I, I think I think the Crows have actually lost sight of why they're there. I think the administration have actually lost sight of what they why they're there. They're custodians. Um, the members will be there when they're all gone. Burton and Fagan and Rashudo. We'll all still be here, um, and the club is bigger than any of those individuals. And what we're asking for with our open letter is uh, some sort of transparency and some sort of input into how our club is run. So if you want to get around the uh, the open letter or the petition and, and sign it, go to aflcrowcast.com. Uh, you'll find uh, the top news article is uh, called, I think it's time for a change. Click on that. Um, and it'll take you to the petition. You can either sign it online or now I've put in a PDF version. You can download, print it out, get all your Crows mates to sign it and email it to petition at aflcrowcast.com. Yeah, good stuff. And the other thing too, the people sort of listening, um, you know, if you have signed it and you're sitting out there, what do I do now? Um, Talk to your mates, talk to everyone that's a Crow supporter, you know. Make sure you share it. Make sure you move it around as far as you can because we need to get as many people in uh, to sign this, get it on board, get it all moving. Um, There's uh, a lot of the other podcasts and different Reddit groups and Facebook groups and all that around in the Crow fandom uh, are all getting getting behind this as well. Um, And uh, it's been quite fantastic. So... Um, you know, just doing one thing isn't enough. Uh, you win premierships by a second and third effort. So uh, everyone that's um, been involved so far has been absolutely fantastic. Yeah. Uh, it'd be good if we could just keep it moving. So just get it, remember, keep it moving, guys. Uh, let's have let's have 2017 ball movement with this petition and uh, move it up to forward fast and not uh, 2019 ball movement. Let's go. <laughs> Very good analogy. Uh, just one thing, if you do uh, sign it online, uh, don't forget to check the verification link in your email account. I know it's a pain in the ass, but if you don't click that verification link, your signature won't count. The reason we've put it there is just to add a layer of authenticity, which I thought was quite uh, topical. Um, but it also allows us to say to the club, look, these are actual individuals. It's not just a bunch of clicks um, like your uh, silly little poll that you did for your away Guernsey that Scorpus uh, got hold of a couple of years ago. Um, yeah. You know, it's a valid uh, 
open and honest petition of individual signatures. Uh, so if you do sign it online or if you have signed it online and you haven't clicked your verification link, uh, please check your inbox, check your junk mail if you can't see it. Uh, it'll be there. Just click the verification link and uh, that'll ensure that your signature is counted. Yeah, just on the Chapman thing, there was two uh, things I did miss in my rant. Um, one was the fact that he made the point that we had problems with our fitness uh, two years ago. Well, it wasn't two years ago, actually. It was last year, Chappie, you know, and I know that's been a peep of shit for a, a long time now. It might seem like two years. Um, and the other thing that he said made the point about, it, but, you know, that's been fixed. At, and he's, I'm sure he said something like at no extra cost. And, of course, as we know, it's substantial extra cost in terms of Saunders um, while the other dickheads are sitting there, um, dickhead one and dickhead two. And uh, that money that's used, being used for Saunders, um, I've been told, was money that came out of poor old Pikey's allocation for his assistant coaches. And he could not get the assistant coaches that he wanted. We've got the people that we've got as a result of that. We've got the we've got the cheapest nondescript coaching panel, apart from Marty Matner, in the competition, in my opinion. You must have been listening Sunday night, Macca. Oh, I think I was awake for a while there. <laughs> You're absolutely right. That's one of the big criticisms, or one of the big things that uh, we've been told that uh, they've basically blown the budget on the fitness department, and instead of replacing people, they've just added another layer. And albeit Steve Saunders is a good addition. They didn't have the nuts to uh, ask Matt Haas to move on. So hence such a big spend in one area and hence why we've had to save money in another. Yeah, all about the football cap, of course. Um, and the one thing, the other thing that's quite clear in your petition, uh, Bean, is we're not talking about the non-football areas of the football club. I think they're in, in some ways they do a good job and I know that They've got, to some degree, a command audience and they've got sponsors wanting to be with us because we're the first and the biggest. Yeah. And who'd want to be with stinky old Port Adelaide anyhow? Yeah. Um, so, but I do think that I'll give credit where it's due. I think perhaps on an administration basis in that sense, they do, they do a very good job. But that's not what they're about. What Fiend said is they've mm -hmm. lost sight of what they're there for. They're a football club. They're there to win a premiership. And 21 years is a long, long time. And that it represents a very inefficient football club and one that hasn't achieved its charter. Mate, this year they haven't even bought all the jerseys to their, all the games. Like, I mean, that's, it really is laughable. Act. <laughs> I mean, you know, a mouth guard is a bit of a joke, even though it costs a bloke <laughs> his front tooth. But to not rock up yeah. with Guernsey, so we're not playing under 12s, for God's sake. Anyway, yeah. um, no, nah, but but it's the um it's the old uh, you know New York crime analogy you know broken window you you stop a broken window you stop all the crime like in and the, and it might be over reading it to a slight degree but there's something going on when you can't get even those little basic rights at any time and when all the spin that comes out of the club is so ultra defensive about oh well you know if you're having a crack at that appointment then you're having a crack at rules integrity no we're saying you got you had a crack at something you got it wrong and now instead of fixing it you're covering it up. Like, uh, it's just fucking... 100% right, Don. You're on the money. Yeah. That's it. And, can, uh, can, yeah. Can I just, um, I guess, just to scale it back a bit and try and bring, I guess, a little bit of analytics to it? I Because I'm sort of sitting there and I'm thinking, you know, prior to the buy, we were, we were eight and five and we we're a fourth. And looking at, at our fixture after the buy, it was a relatively decent run home. And I'm sitting there and thinking, well, and talking to my family and thinking, well, you know, we, we look like we're a pretty reasonable chance for top four. And we're thinking about, right, let, we need to start thinking about budgeting for finals yeah. and travelling and, you know, tickets and all of that kind of stuff. And ha how, does it, how does it happen that we're eight and five, we're top four, and then a month later, you know, the place it feels like it's burnt to the ground? And most importantly, and I'd ask this question because we've been ranting and raving, um, and rightly so, um, at the management and the coaches, but it just feels to me that there's a disappearing act done by the players. And I'm watching a lot of the you know Victorian shows and, and everybody uh, is 
you know, going back to the camp. And they're saying that there's, uh, you know, and, and Rose on radio saying that he's received phone calls and, that, you know, that, that, that there's a loss of trust um, that hasn't been regained and there were supposed to be things done that haven't been done to regain trust. And in particular, Don Pike and Brett Burton. And so it's all related back to the 2018 camp and it's fractured the players and it's this and it's that and all the rest of it. And I just wonder, I, I wonder how we, we go from a position of eight and five in the top four to then being in a situation where there seems to be stuff coming out, I assume from players uh, that, we're, that we're back, you know, that we lose a few games and suddenly it's the camp. Now, I, you, I don't, for you know, that I don't like this playing group. I never have, really. If I'm brutally honest, I, don't, I just don't like them because I don't trust them. And that's, Built up since twenty, you know, since probably you give them twenty fifteen a pass because of the tragedy. So it's built up since twenty sixteen, and bearing in mind Don Pike started in twenty sixteen, and he has got you know from the and we know that from the the first team that he selected, there were sixteen players there against Essendon, I think it was, and so those sixteen odd players, we know who they are, don't trust a single one of them, and. So I, I put this question to, to you guys and to the, all the guys in the chat and your people in the chat. How is it that we go from this team that's in good nick, top four, to a month later, a shambles, and, and, and all of a sudden it's everybody else's fault? And I just put that out there. Well, Pete, I'll start and I'll, everyone else should have a crack at this too. But if we look at the season uh, objectively... We had a block of about five good games and that block of five good games uh, coincided with a change in tactics that happened after about round four mm -hmm. and it involved us uh, closing games down, uh, being very vigorous at the contest, uh, winning contest ball, winning clearances, uh, being very considered in our ball movement. Um, and Don said it again. Uh, no, Camparelli uh, mentioned it again in his in his. Uh, press conference today that uh, you know they like to have ball in hand they don't want to move too quickly because they like to bring the defense up and maintain field position and because it was such a vast removal from our normal playing style I think it caught a few uh, teams off guard because when I would imagine that when you're uh, when you're coaching against the Crows it's, it's fairly consistent what you've been getting from the Crows and so you can you can predict pretty much what's going to happen, but I think that threw a few teams off. The fact that we'd we'd gone into shutdown mode away from that free scoring mode, but it only let's face it, it's only lasted about six weeks, and very quickly, teams have sorted us out. We've seen teams corral us around the contest. We've seen teams very careful not to commit too many people. Uh, to the contest and to make sure they've got outriders. Uh, we've seen teams very willing and uh, almost obsessed with trying to attack us from de from their defence, particularly down the corridor. We've, we saw it with Port Adelaide, we saw it with Essendon, um, and Carlton were much the same again. So when you, when you remove that block of you know, half a dozen games, and you look at our early season form, which was bog average, and probably not much better than what it is now, and then you factor in the fact that we've had a significant percentage boost as a result of two floggings uh, of Gold Coast, I, I think our position on the ladder is, is overstated, and I think our fall from grace has been magnified by that change in tactics but I, I don't think we've been a very good side since very very uh late in 2017. yeah and, and to sort of accent that too the group of five games you're talking about uh, there was three of them where we played against absolute pus opposition as well like we played gold coast frio and um uh somebody else in there um that was not very good either St. A wounded, wounded richmond a wounded richmond who nearly got and up. And yeah, well, they had you know they would probably would have had yeah a lot of top class players out. And then um, you know GWS and uh, there was one other GWS in the Melbourne game were decent games, but Melbourne had passed this year as well. So when you actually pull apart the victories where they were, you know, um, 
against decent opposition, we we really haven't got the chocolates at all. And um, you know, the the way that our season was looking until the bye, and the way that it was looking up until about half time in the game of Geelong, <laughs> the week after the bye, and then what it looks like since has just been chalk and cheese. But uh, you wonder sometimes after you know winning does bind and hold things together, and as soon as the um, in classic this playing group sort of way of being. As soon as the chips start going the other direction, everything falls apart. You know, mm. we saw it on Grand Final Day. We saw it against North Melbourne and Tassie. You know, Fragility, we saw it. donkey. Fragility. <laughs> yeah. 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 We've seen it 15 times. So, you know, when things are going together, we uh, we play like giants. But uh, the moment something goes back the other way, you know, we fall to pieces. And that was the real sad thing I've, I found about probably the port game most is, um, you know, that some of those wins that we got in that little block in between, it looked like we just had some grit and we weren't going to be, um, you know, roll over roses anymore. And we just, you know, just uh, lay down our backs and looked loving their eyes and let it all happen. And it just is no good. Well, you know, the only thing, and I, I think there's a lot of merit in what's being said, but I'm struggling in one particular area that if you look back at last year, 2018, we had massive levels of injuries. I mean, Burton and his mate, they managed to, one by one to get our players and give them hamstring injuries and load them up with more work. So they so they basically found the snapping point for each player. And, I mean, we, we for so many weeks, did not put out our best team out on the park. We were under fire all year by the media. We were belittled, rubbished uh, accusations. We had uh, the Williams dickhead suggesting that people were tied naked to trees and all this sort of stuff. Um we could never be more per- persecuted than we were last year, and yet we won 12 games. This year, we'll be struggling to win 12 games. And oh, we've had... Right. Well, right. Meant, probably, right. we may well not. And we, yet we've had nothing like that in terms of the amount of injuries. We've had nothing like all that shit that went on last year. <clears throat> so there is something a little bit more than that. And I think that it's a reflection of... And I do think to some degree it's a reflection of last year in the sense that the playing group do not trust the people that are admitted, that are in a football sense that are, that are supposed to be getting them to the line. I don't think they trust Burton. I don't think they trust Hass. Um, I don't think they have much respect for some of their coaches. They couldn't possibly have respect for Hart. Um, they don't know the bloke in the midfield. I think he's set up to be disgraceful. Um, so I think, you know, it's a... It's a there's a... A lot of it is a reflection back to last year and their and the players' opinion of the people that are running them. Well, I think, I think all, all three of those are all, all very, very valid answers to the, to the questions um, that I raised. And I guess the bottom line point to make out of it all is that it's a whole of club. You know, what's happened, and we all, we all understand that, that we are at a... We really are at the edge of the cliff in terms of the playing list and in terms of, you know, where we go next year, but... It's a whole of club issue. It's you know, I just, I, I just don't like to see that playing group escape um, the scrutiny they deserve. No, and I think uh, what you, what you raise is valid, um, Pete, because it's quite mystifying. Um, but it's not unusual for this for this club to drop its bundle, is it? I mean, we've seen it at no. various times uh, over the course of the last few years. Um, but what I want to what I want to focus on just for the next couple of minutes is just what's come out of the club uh, in the last twenty four to forty eight hours, and I want to draw people's attention back to the major turning point that seemed to occur when Phil Walsh and Mark Rashido and Andrew Fagan came to the club, and one of the big things that was said at the time was that we were going to be a no spin club that we were going to have authenticity, that we were going to be transparent to our membership, but most importantly, we were going to be a no-spin club. Now, I think that the four of us and probably just about everyone uh, listening to the cast and certainly the, the guys on Spreaker Chat and Facebook Chat, we could have just about predicted what was said over the last 24 to 48 hours. We've had... Uh, Chapman come out on a couple of channels on SEN. He was woeful, I thought. It sounded like a used car salesman. Uh, we've had Fagan. We've had Donny Pike out uh, on 360. 
We've had Camparelli today. We've had one or two short cuts from a couple of players. Uh, we've had Mark Rusciuto on his radio show. It's all the same rhetoric. That, and it's... I mean, it's fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me kind of situation now. Because we all know, we can all read between these lines now. This is not fooling us anymore, which is, I think, why we're, we're driving this particular movement. But I don't think... I think that the Adelaide Crows Football Club actually underestimate their supporter base because they feel as if they can just trot out the same stuff. And the classic one was what you mentioned earlier, uh, uh, I think it was Donkey about uh, Fagan saying, you know, how it's insulting to think that Mark Rusciuto would, would you know, uh, lack integrity in, in employing Brett Burton. It, it's just what that's actually insulting to the membership, to the supporters, to answer that question, which is a valid question, by basically throwing it back on the supporter base to say you're insulting us. Didn't we hear that from Bert, Brett Burton last year? Yes, we did. We yes, heard the we same did. thing. He was insulted. You know, I, I've been told that Brett Burton uh, has said this week that he's not concerned by supporter backlash. He's the reason, well, that, we're the reason he's got a freaking job, Brett Burton. He's not smart enough. He's not smart enough to realise it. No, no, no. This is arrogance, Macca. This is arrogance because. Brett Burton has forgotten that indirectly the people that are paying his salary are the people that listen to this podcast, who go to the games, who read papers, who call into 5AA. It's, we're the people that pay Brett Burton's salary. And he needs to drop the arrogance, drop the dismissiveness and start listening to what people are saying. If there's a supporter backlash, it's quite purely and simply what you said on Sunday night, Macca. We're sick of being not even, like, uh, within a bull's roar of a premiership for 21 years. Yep. And, look, just on this whole discussion about Burton, um, Ali Clark, and we, we all know who Ali Clark is. She's the wife of Matt Maddie Clark, and she has a radio show on the ABC, and she was interviewing Fagan this morning, and she made a, a comment, which I think is a bit of a slip-up on her part, because it's a very, very telling comment. She started off by saying to Fagan, um, the elephant, in, we, bet we might as well get onto the elephant in the room in regards to um, the mates ship of uh, Rue, Eddie's mates and uh, Burton, blah, 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 blah. And Fagan did the, exactly the Chapman line, you know, how dare you suggest that Rue would, you know, do that sort of thing. But the big slip up is the elephant in the room. Obviously, her husband's agreeing with all that, that Burton is the problem and Rue is the problem in the sense of who he's, been, who he's put in. Um, by, by stating to Faye that the elephant in the room is that particular point. And that's, so therefore, that is obviously something within the club that other people, other than these idiots are trying to cover it up, talk about all the time. Yep, don't disagree at all, Mac. And it was a bit of a slip up. I did hear that one. Uh, it was, uh, and let's make no mistake: the Adelaide Crows are very, very media conscious. They've got one of the most media savvy administrations going around. They're on top of social media. We have the we have you know AFL, uh, AFC media, obviously. Um, you know they they are very across social media. They're very across what's going what's going on in you know uh in, in the outside world when it comes to what's being said about the adelaide crows and the fact that we've had three or four people from the administration trot out basically the same lines shows you that they've all got into a room and said how are we going to how are we going to address this and yep. um you know they've all trotted this out but the, and absolutely it, phoenix and it would have been it would have probably worked had it not been a carbon copy of what happened last year and what's happened yep. in previous times. Well, yep. we're, we're no longer falling for this stuff. This, we don't want rhetoric. We we don't want spin. We were promised no 
Spin. Well, this, this isn't a carbon copy. This is this is this is actually a better version than they've ever done before because they've actually rolled out top brass. They've done it really quickly. They've actually done palitudes about having meetings and action and understanding that things aren't going right. So they're they're doing all the right little spin tactics, but their problem is that they are just so full of shit um, that nothing's kicking through. And the other thing is, what the hell is that? Getting, are you getting fucking ice cream or something? Oh, the bloody... I want the, I want the kids rigging. <laughs> uh, I'll give them the phone that, and message. How <laughs> old is your phone? That <laughs> sounds like a Fisher-Price keyboard. Mate, I have different kids on it so I know which kid's rigging. <laughs> But uh, they are they are completely stage managing this right now. They are in full on panic mode because they know they are they are going backwards and fast. So the thing the thing about the lines that we get shot out every week, like you know, it's a trend on an event. Uh, we'll reset the mechanism. Um, we'll back the boys in to respond. They're all good lines as long as you win the next week or within the next couple of weeks. But we have seen failure after failure after failure of this playing group. And that means failure after failure after failure in the box and failure after failure after failure from the administration. And now they're sending all the people out to try and say, hey, look, it's all fine. We are aware. You know, we know there's a problem. Yeah, we know there's a problem. Fucking fix it, mate. Like, get on with it. Do something. We're actually completely over the spin of the lies. Like, just get on with it. Do a review. There is going to be absolutely no reason that stops an external review happening into this club. It should have happened at the end of last year. I wrote to Fags and I demanded it. I got some palatudes back about how we're going to have a look and do something. And, and when we were... It's platitudes, mate. Platitudes. Absolute platitudes. Um, you know, you took those jobs. You took those positions so you could lead our club to excellence. Excellence doesn't mean um, a great profit line. Excellent doesn't mean a, re, uh, um, a moving over to the North Adelaide Aquatic Centre. Excellence doesn't mean, um, you know, uh, you know, fancy TV studios and and uh, nepotistic uh, headline hosts of them. Like excellence means premierships. We want premierships before we want the profits. Premierships before profits. We want an audit now, and we want you to sack Burton. And I was actually going to be not uh, advocating that we sack people. Let's have an audit. But really, we all know Burton's a massive problem. He is an absolute cancer on this club. There is nobody that we have heard any story from that has any respect for him. He's arrogant to the fans. He's arrogant to the players. And he's an absolute cancer on this club. And he needs to go. And if someone at the club is listening and not doing anything about it right now, you need to go to because you're part of the problem, not the solution, and get out of my club. Brilliantly said. I couldn't agree with him more with you, Dom. Uh, he is a cancer in the club, and the, the people that are doing nothing about it are equally as responsible. One, one interesting thing I want to raise, um, and Mackie, you t- touch upon uh, the interview um, in relation to um, uh, the appointment of um, uh, Rua Burton and, uh, and, the, and, and the kind of, the, you know, oh, my God, you know, as if that would, uh, as if that would happen, and as if it was a, you know, job for the mates, for the for the boys, and and this is something that has worried me for a long time. And has anybody actually stopped and had a read through our staff list? And and you can, I if have. You want, if you want to start, you can. I mean, starting, you know, with the with the football department, you know, you've got Ben Hart on the coaching staff, you've got Brent Riley and Matthew Wright. Um, in development, you've got obviously Brett Burton um, as the football manager. You've got Justin Reed, Reedy's son, uh, as the uh, as the list manager. And you've got, and it's all headed up by Mark Rashido. And then the coach, of course, is Don Pike, who was previously an assistant under Neil Craig. Then you can move into you know the the, the front office, and you've got Nigel Smart as a chief operating officer. God help me. You've got Rod Jamison on the board. Um, I'm not quite sure what Matthew Robin does, but he wanders around the boundary line at, at games with the top on, so I imagine he's paid to do Me- something. Member engagement, I think. Member engagement. <laughs> it's Andrew Crow's old job. Oh, God. Um, now, I'm just, I'm just running these off the top of my head, and I'm sure, and you might be able to think of some others. Um, uh, but it is... I just cannot, and I haven't done the research, and so I could be wrong here, but I'm tipping you could go to any other AFL club and there would not be that many ex-players or people connected to the club 
holding positions both on field and off field upstairs and downstairs it, we are covered we are covered in crows people and, and i'd be very very surprised if um if, if powerful clubs like hawthorns you know these kind of clubs richmond I'd be very very surprised if they uh, had richmond people in just pretty much every bloody position and this is a, it's a it's an absolute indictment on the club and the fact that it see and what it sees itself as it sees itself as itself as a home for retired players um, and I cannot believe for a second that when all of these positions come up that we go out and we get the best possible people from around the country to fill these professional positions I oh, think you'd I, have to be insane to think that you'd be yeah. insane to think that I think I saw you post on Big Footy today, Pete, and it was maybe a throwaway line, but it was probably fair enough too. You'd just like to see some of these positions actually advertised on Seek or something, wouldn't you? <laughs> well, yeah. well, there's, there's two parts it of this. It was a throwaway, and, and what I said is that if, there, if, there is a, if there's any recommendations that come out of you know, a review, could we at least just, if there's a big position coming up, can we put a bloody ad in the paper? Yeah. yeah. Look, the, other, the other thing about having so many former crows at the place. It also means that, um, you know, if you do hire one person who's an outsider, let's say his name's Josh Franco, and he comes in and he actually tries to shake the place up and do something, you just get the covenant sort of turn on him and sort of look all at one and then just shut him out the door. Uh, well, I mean, we know we all know that was probably led by Brett Burton as well. But, like, we just – you just need a bomb of um, outside blood because it's inbred at the moment. We're all going to start look like an Alabama family from the mountains. Yeah. Well, look, uh, what you're saying is true, and it leads me to something that, that uh, added to um, what I mentioned on Sunday night about Josh Franco, Donk, and that was that uh, he was basically forced out, uh, well, basically ostracised because of his uh, willingness to question uh, the status quo. Um, I, I've been told by a couple of people and a couple of people that uh, are more credible than you'd expect uh, touching base with us, that this is this all starts from post twenty seven grand twenty seventeen grand final, and I've been told by two sources that are independent of each other that uh, Don Pike basically blamed the twenty seventeen grand final capitulation on our forward line, um, and uh, had a, had a fair crack at the forward line. Uh, in in the uh, post post grand final dispatches, and of course, who was in charge of our forward line back there? David Teague. Uh, David Teague uh, has since left. Now I know it it's very easy and probably a fair amount of truth in the fact that David Teague left because not only was he offered a position at his old club, uh, even though it was a similar position, you'd be blind Freddy to to not think that uh, Brenton Bolton was reaching perhaps the end unless he uh, turned it around. And David Teague probably saw a bit of an opportunity there. Having said all of that, David Teague was also uh, widely accepted as our star <laughs> assistant coach. He was. And you would have expected that the Adelaide Football Club would have tried very, very hard to keep David Teague. But they didn't. And here we are. Uh, Josh Franco, the same, was a well-regarded well uh, coach, uh, left after one year, initially using the uh, reason, and I'm not sure whether he said it or whether the club said it, that he wanted to pursue training, uh, teaching, teaching, teaching yes. opportunities. And then, you know, within a couple of months, he finds himself up with his old teammate, Stewie Jew, at Gold Coast. We... Uh, what Pete said about essentially describing a boys' club, and then you you look at the blokes that have left uh, from the from the coaching staff. They're all outside that. David Teague is, has no association with the Crows. Um, Josh Franco no association with the Crows. Um, John Warsfold didn't want to coach the Crows, even though he'd been here. All of it points to this boys' club mentality, and that's why I'm so angry at Andrew Fagan for being so passive aggressive about his comments when faced with that question you know it's not insult it shouldn't be insulting it's insulting to suggest that the crows supporter base is too stupid to join the dots 
That's what's insulting. Um, guys, I don't normally do this, and I hope it works. Um, and this is without notice. I haven't actually put put this to any of you guys, but I just wanted to play uh -oh. four. I just want to play four minutes, um, four minutes of something that we probably will remember, and uh, it's played with all due respect to the person uh, involved. All due respect, uh, much respect uh, to him and his family, um, but I think it's worth revisiting. So hopefully this works. <laughs> Can you please welcome senior coach Phil Walsh? Uh, thanks, Soders. We'll, we'll actually uh, we'll put that on our website so you can all get to see that. But um, it was really good for the guys up here watching. It was fantastic. I, I, I never liked talking after Andrew Fagan. Blokes from the rugby background, you get that Windsor knot absolutely perfect. I'm not, I'm not sure if anyone noticed, but uh, I get a few complaints after I speak after Andrew. But um, First of all, I love that video, and thanks to Curtis and his team for making it, and also thanks to Graham Corns for doing the voiceover. Uh, Graham, a great legend of this club, he got to form the, the first team, the first Adelaide Crows team ever to, to play for this great club, and it's a great honour for, for me now to get the chance to form the Adelaide Crows team that's going to play in two, season 2015. It's an honour that I don't take lightly. Um, standing behind me is a team. I believe strongly in the power of team and how it differs from a group of individuals. A team only exists when the individuals are more concerned with how a team is described than how they are described themselves. And that's what the Adelaide Footy Club is going to be about. It's going to be about team in season 2015. Team success is an outcome of trust. And the only way to build trust is through actions on the field. And we look forward this year to building your trust by seeing the actions that this group is going to put on the field. The Japanese have a phrase, gamon suyoi. It basically translates as enduring strength. If you ask the guys to translate, they'd probably say that means season 2015. We've challenged this group, not just physically, mentally and also their ability to compete. At the same time we've tried to implement a game plan based around team first. At my first press conference I publicly challenged the players that you've got to go and chase success. It doesn't come looking for you. There's no secret recipe. What's required is hard work, elite standards, attention to detail and a fierce competitiveness every time you put on that crow's jumper. I've explained to the players there's a difference between being interested in playing for the Adelaide Football Club and being committed to playing for the Adelaide Football Club. This team has worked as hard as any team I've been a part of in my 20 pre-seasons in AFL footy. Success is within their reach but we need total commitment, not just from a few, but from everyone. Because we're about to come up against 17 other teams that are just as desperate for success as what we are. We often live in a world of shoulda, woulda, coulda. Gentlemen, your time is now. Don't waste one second. Some people never get the opportunity that you've got. The AFL is all about win-loss. There are no moral victories or respectable losses. You either get the job done game day or you don't. Failure is feedback, but it's what you do about that feedback. In season 2015, the Adelaide Footy Club will be a no shortcuts footy club. We are one pre-season into a journey, a journey where players who put what's best for the team ahead of what's best for them will get us to the destination we desire to go. The men behind me have great character. Character determines action. Repeated action creates behaviours. 
Behaviours then become habits. Elite habits create sustained success. I look forward to seeing you at Adelaide Oval this year and being part of that journey. Thank you very much for coming tonight. Very moving. Yeah, and I'm sorry to drop that on people, um, but I listened to it today and it's still on the Adelaide Football Club YouTube channel. And I tell you what, everyone down at the Adelaide Football Club should re-listen to that, especially the last 20 seconds of that video where he talks about behaviour and repeat behaviour, forming habits and etc. etc. I can't quote it. Um, also, the part where he said there's no such thing as a respectable loss. Uh, you know, these buffoons are out there quoting that we had a respectable loss. Um, look, they should listen to this, as you just said, Fee. This is really getting to the heart of a football club. If you want a football club to be a winning football club, you have to follow that philosophy. And then we, we were badly, sadly robbed of, in my opinion, a, a man who would have proven to be one of the greatest coaches of all time because of the fact that he knew what it was all about and he had the ability to implement it. And it didn't come straight away when he started with us, but he is a, he is a man who was a man that would have achieved it. I, that I have no doubt. Fee, we we you know we often hear you talk about the change agent, and 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 there is no doubt that Phil was the he was the external person. He, he was not a crow's man, and he was the change agent that we so desperately need. And it's and sadly, um, uh, after that all happened, we we went we we really at that point. We went back, and we, and we got a we got a Neil Craig disciple. Yeah, and um, <clears throat> you know there was, there was once once you move away from the Malcolm Blight, the Phil Walsh, those type of change agents that you know in modern parlance, Alastair Clarkson, you know real even, change agents. Even Luke Beveridge, then. as much as we hate him. Yep, when you know when you go when you when when you move away from that type of coach, um, then you know and and time you know i mean we recognized at that moment at that in, in 2014 we recognized that's what we needed and you know I, I hope people don't like that was very not very much not about using fuel to evoke emotion although obviously it has for everyone but it's no, about it's what man. it's about what the club decided to stand for in 2015 because what Phil so eloquently put back at that season launch was the beginning of a journey, and it was a journey that the club had signed up for. The club mm. signed up for that. They hired Phil Walsh. Now, you can bet your life that when Phil went for his interview at the club, he would have said those things. He would have said, here's my non-negotiables, and he would have listed off all that stuff. We all know how impressive his interview was by all reports. The club bought into that. The club signed up for that, you know. And in such a short time, we were so invigorated by what we heard. And, and yes, you know, we'll never know how successful or otherwise that team would have been under Phil. But as as much as we all miss Phil, this, this is not actually about Phil. It's about what the club signed up for four years ago. Authenticity, authenticity, hard work, teamwork, no passengers, clear commitment, elite standards, all these things, all these things that the club signed up for. And it's disgusting to me that a bloke that came along for that ride, Andrew Fagan, would now sit and tell his bloody members that we're insulting him by asking questions of the football club because all we're doing is what Phil Walsh would have done to that team when he took over. He would have asked questions. Are you behaving properly? Are, are your standards elite? 
Are you doing what needs to be done? Are we working as a team? That's all the supporter base is asking the club right now. And all we're getting is Rob Chapman and Andrew Fagan and Brett Burton and Mark Rusciuto spinning harder than my washing machine. You know, and that's not what the club decided to stand for four years ago. So what happened to that? Did they Were they playing lip service to Phil? Were they thinking that Phil was going to just take him on for the ride and they were just going to ride on his coattails? Did they really buy in? You know, did they really believe in what they were saying about Phil after he'd passed away? Because I'll tell you what, Phil in such a short time left such a legacy and the club had, a, had an obligation to see that journey through. And I'm not blaming the players because the players went through more than anyone at that club when Phil passed. And yes, you could say that the players bought into that too. But if they're, if they're not seeing that from their leaders around the club anymore, then you can't expect them to do anything other than disengage, can you? It's human nature. That's my rant. Yeah. It's hard to well. It's hard to go against anything you said there, Fein. Um You playing the Phil Walsh thing is, is sad, really, because it let us know what could have been. Oh no! Just uh, it rips your guts out, doesn't it? Yep. And then you look at what we've got, and you think we are, pardon my language, a thousand fucking miles away from that. We've um, got nobody that's willing to stand up and take ownership for how we're going. No. But uh, Mark Rusciuto was the one that brought Phil into the club. Mark Rusciuto yeah. went to uh, Dean Bailey's funeral and listened to Phil Walsh talk for 30 minutes about his mate without any notes and thought, wow, we have to have this guy leading the Adelaide Football Club. Phil Walsh impressed Mark Rusciuto so much that Mark Rusciuto not only got on board with the Adelaide Football Club but got Phil Walsh to break... A, a, a covenant that he had held all the way through that he was he didn't want to be a senior coach. Phil didn't yeah. want to be a senior coach. And Mark Rusciuto was so impressed by what he said at Dean's funeral that he got Phil Walsh to coach. Now, where the hell is Mark Rusciuto now? Because Mark Rusciuto should be carrying that banner. And I know it's painful for people who are close to Phil, and I'm not trying to invoke Phil in all of this. I'm trying to reiterate what the club bought into by taking Phil on, you know, mm. and the fact that they've moved so far away from that. So I apologise if I've offended anyone by invoking Phil into this, but I hope people understand the spirit in which I, I brought it up. No, Fane, no. actually, I, I get it totally. It's not... A, yeah, it's, <clears throat> it's about... It's about, you know, what, as you correctly say, what we signed up for. And, I, and, and can I just take a, um, a, a comment by um, one of our very, very avid listeners, one of our uh, favourites, Jason McKay, who says in the chat, who could follow Phil? Well, there's a, and this is absolutely no disrespect at all, but there are, you know, uh, I mean, he was a, you know, a great coach. And as I said, this is not disrespectful, but there are, if the club put their mind to it and they wanted to uphold that legacy, there are a lot of people that they could find that could external to the club come in and act as a change agent but they're scared of it and they, they're not interested and Don, and Don Pike really it, it, it suits the status quo that had been there prior to Phil yeah. Walsh coming into the club it was safe and so it? <clears throat> it's safe he's, he's a Neil Craig disciple and you can see it um, that's where you know that's where he learned his coaching and then he you know was under John Walsfield um, so you know, I mean, you could look at. I mean, you look at David T. You look at what he's done at Carlton, and we had him in the club. Um, so you know, there are people out there, but the club has gone, you know, so far back on what it signed up for. I know that that's what your point is. They've gone so far back from what they actually signed up for. It's been such a reversal that they're just not. There's just not the capacity to go out and seek somebody like that. Actually, a very, point, very good point you raised there, Pete, uh, about Teague because of the fact that uh, Teague uh, is a massive uh, change agent. And, I mean, he just threw Bolton's game plan out the bloody window. He just threw it out and just gave them a very simple game plan to go out and follow. 
and uh, with, with great success to the point that he embarrassed our club last week and we should be bloody embarrassed, totally embarrassed. Um, whereas we don't, we, as you said, uh, well, when he was here, because um, he was beleaguered uh, and held responsible partially, if not all, for the loss in the 2017 grand final, that was lost by the players. They, they did not turn up. They just did not turn up to the 2017 grand final. It, they were the best team all year, but they just didn't turn up the grand final. And who's responsible for that? I can't answer that. I think I don't know if anybody can really answer it. And but to lose David Teague out of that, I think was a great loss because I had a great opinion of him, and I I always thought that one day he might become the coach of the Adelaide Football Club. And well, I think he's going to become a coach of a senior club, whether it be Carlton this year or some other club uh, this year or down the track, because I'm sure that he will become a senior coach and he will be a change agent type of senior coach. Quality. And Fane, just just what Matt uh, looking at, um, Matt says in the chat, you know, who, who, what what coaches would come here now? And you know, when you've when you've got, and I mean, they all, I mean, I'm sure they all talk. And when you've got that. Um, that the, the structure in place, which is just so crow-centric, and you've got that boys' club in there, when you've got such a majority of your key positions held by ex-players, really, as an external person, and when you when you've seen you know assistant coaches cheat up and spat out, and as you quite rightly observe, the ones that are spat out are the ones that aren't part of the club. You know, where's yeah. the incentive? Who, who wants to come here? And, well, you know, your career just going to go south. Yeah, and I, I think that's why the Adelaide Crows need uh, a transparent review because it's not just for supporters, although, you know, I, I feel like the supporters deserve it, but it's also for their brand. I, I think the Adelaide Crows in the football industry would be seen as a very insular, very closed, very uh, uh, nepotistic environment. Mm. And if you're a Brett Ratton, uh, why you're quite right there, Pete. Why would you come to the Adelaide Crows as, as an individual? See, the, the advantage that our two change agents have had in Malcolm Blight and Phil Walsh is that they've come in with a lot of credibility and a lot of leverage. Blighty, obviously, because of his history and his background, and he was able to make sweeping changes that no other coach since has been able to make. And Phil Walsh came in with the benefit of having coached the opposition for a number of years, have, had been uh, you know, involved in the fishbowl environment. He understood what the Adelaide Crows were and he had enough credibility uh, from his own background and CV to be able to say to the Crows, well, if you want me, this is how it's going to be. You know, now, the changes that he made weren't as instantaneous as Blighty in terms of personnel, but they were probably going to be as far-reaching. Um, and you, you're quite right, Pete. You're dead right. It, no coach, no. You, you're setting a, you're setting a bloke up to fail. You're setting yourself up to fail now by walking into the Adelaide Football Club, surrounded by you know 13 year veteran Scott Campriali, 10 year veteran Matty Clark, you know a couple of rookie uh, incumbents, and and uh, a failed media personality. You know, in your coach's box, you are set up to fail. So why bother? And and mm. we're probably not going to pay you because we're paying mm. you know the the massage therapists down at the bloody gym too much money uh, to keep our players on the track. It's a I great about point. Matty, Cl Matty Clark too. I forgot about Matty Clark too. He was one that I forgot to mention. He was another one. Another and, player and no disrespect to Matty because he's done well with the, with the women's team, but the, we're talking about the men's team here. Um, yeah. You know. Uh, and yeah. no, the simple fact is he's been around for ages. Yep. Ben Davidson in the chat makes a very good point that Richmond were, at, were in our exact position in uh, 2016 and they secured an external review, cost them 500k, and then look what happened. They decided it wasn't sack Hardwick, it was broader than that. And, and that might well be the case with us. It might be sack Pike. It's sure going to be as he'll move some of the ones underneath him and... Uh, uh, make a totally different structure, perhaps, or better people in that structure. But Richmond did it. They won. They won the flag in 2017. They were in a very good chance. They were a chance in 2018, and they're going to be a very good chance again this year. But you know uh, what the difference is between us and and Richmond Macca? The, they've the, got members. 
no, no, no. The the executive backed that review. <coughs> so the board requested the review of the football operations and they backed it in. Now, can you imagine, firstly, our board requesting a full independent review by a company like Ernst & Young and secondly, backing it in and clearing all those people out? It's not the same environment and that's that's part of the problem. Well, you know, um, if you're going to have an external review, you have to back it in. Oh, yeah, um, I agree with you, but uh, that's what I'm saying. That's the difference between... Uh, like, you know, Fagan told us the other day that they're always reviewing. They're all, And, you know, they use external consultants all the time and yada, 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 yada. That's not what we're looking for here. We're looking for an independent to review everything from top down. The operations of the club, the structure of the club, the personnel of the club, the culture of the club. And that includes Andrew Fagan, Brett Burton, Don Pike, um, you know, uh, Nigel Smart, these blokes. It, they're not exclusive from that review. But the problem is that up until now, Andrew Fagan has been the one instigating the review and part, probably part of the review panel. Well, the, you know, the, the, the problem I heard that Fagan make that comment about that they do com progressively little external reviews and internal reviews, et cetera, et cetera. And that is absolutely bullshit and meaningless because of the fact that you've got a totality of a situation and to examine one little splinter of that uh, in isolation doesn't give you the answer. It just can't because it, uh, a footy club's an integrated thing that where the actions of one part react on the actions of another part, which reacts on another part, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and the only way you can do it is by a, an external review by people not involved in it, not with pre preconceived ideas that will examine the whole thing and how it's all structured and how it is all integrated and is it the correct structure is it the once you've done that is it the right people sitting in there etc cetera, etc cetera. and what he's talking about is a pimple we're talking about a pumpkin well he's talking about good corporate practice which is you're always reviewing your processes and procedures any any corporate does that but that's not about being critical that's about being lean and being efficient and and uh, making sure you're not wasting money, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Th th that's a completely you, you're looking at a completely different outcome when you're doing those ongoing reviews, right? It's the same when players do 360 peer reviews with their um, leading team stuff and all that sort of stuff. You, you're looking at empowerment with those kind of reviews. You're looking for for um, incremental gains. Doing, conducting an external review on the club and its operations is entirely different to that. It's about uh, sta coming in from the outside and critically analysing whether the club is actually set up correctly, whether it's got the right bums in the right seats and whether it's spending money in the right places, whether its priorities are right. It, that's it's, that's a, a more holistic approach rather than just incremental gains, which every corporate should be doing all the time. Mm. I mean, honestly... You know, in any kind of review, does, does the Brett Burton appointment stack up? I mean, was there a search done? Was there an executive search done? Was there a company engaged to go and find the best possible manager of football in Australia? Did that happen? Well, when you appoint a guy who, of course who, it didn't. who's only got, they've got fitness and he's just going to be responsible for uh, like the whole whole spectrum of football, including uh, drafting, training, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. and he's got zero experience in it, and he, he, I mean, he just can't be the right guy. He just cannot. Be. That, that was just a, that was just a coffee down the coffee shop. That's all that yeah. was. But well, even but even once you um, but even if you even if you just try to say, all right, everything that's happened in the past is in the past. Put an X through it and put it off the side. Um, or you know how the hire was made, so we're not you know questioning Rue's integrity. Like since he's been in the job, he's completely underperformed and absolutely fucked up everything he's touched. Embarrassed and, the club last year. Yeah, embarrass the club. You've got the you've got how he treated Josh Franco, so Josh Franco had to leave. You've got how he um, intervened into Brad Crouch's groin. Um, you know, <laughs> what? I really said that not the right way, did I? No. <laughs> <laughs> um, that wasn't even one of the ones I did on purpose. But um, you know, we had you know we had him interfering with Brad's groin um, and delaying the surgery. We had 
uh, we had all of the continual hamstring problems and the interventions through there early. We had the absolute arrogance in the in the press conference. We had the bypassing the proper systems to insert creative minds into the club in the first place. Had him bypassing the established systems to make the camp happen and and tuck it away from people. And then the denial of the way that things have happened. Like so, all of these things he has done since he's been in the top gig, and absolutely no accountability. And he's been absolutely protected by Andrew Fagan. Andrew Fagan, you protected someone who has damaged all of our assets. You've damaged the reason why we go to the footy. You've damaged the reason why we care about this game. And you are doing absolutely nothing about it. Fagan, you are a fraud. Burton, you're a dickhead. And we need you guys out of our club so we can get on and make it better. I actually thought I had a patent on the word dickhead for him. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, I'll, let you, I'll let you use it, mate. I'll let you yeah. use it. Um, re- replication is the greatest form of flattery. Don't forget that, big fella. Okay, I'll take it then. Yeah. All right. Now, we've been going for it over an hour, and we did promise that we'd open the phone line. So if anyone does want to ring in, uh, then I didn't want to put it on Twitter because I'll get every dickhead port fan ringing my phone for the rest of my life. Um, so <laughs> if you, uh, the, that's why I didn't give it to you, Donk. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I was like, oh, oh. <laughs> Give us a number, give us a number. Um, so if you want to ring in, it's 7220-8087. Is that what it is? 7220-8087. No, no, no. It's 7222. Too many numbers. Hang on. 7222-8087. All right. It's up on the screen if you're watching on Facebook. 7222-8087. If you want to vent, and I've got to say that uh, part of the petition uh, is that people could leave a comment and some, we've had comments from probably 80% of the people who've uh, signed up and uh, some of the comments have been fantastic. So now is your chance to vent. Uh, all these boys on bloody Spreaker chat, uh, get around it. Uh, did I actually... Yeah, I have unmuted where's the, the phone. So, uh, where's the, what? Where's the comments? What do you mean, where's the comments? Where the, well, on your petition. Where are they? Can we read them? Oh, Let's no, you can, unfortunately you can't read them. Um, huh. because then I I had to download an Excel file on it, but they they all say the same thing. Everyone's sick of the boys' club. Everyone's sick of the uh, the dismissive and arrogant nature of of our senior administrators, and they all want change. Uh, we've had you know over four hundred signatures. We need a lot more, a lot more yeah. to be taken seriously. Let's be honest. Uh, four hundred yeah. is a is a great uh, start, start, but we need more. Uh, we need people to download that PDF. Take it uh, to the footy. If you're going to go to the footy on Saturday, take it to the footy and just pass it around the people around you uh, and get them to sign it. You know, the more signatures that we can have online, the more signatures that we can have on paper, the more signatures that we can present to the Adelaide Football Club, uh, the better because they need to understand that this isn't just some ranty little podcast. This is actually the people um, expressing that enough is enough. So... You know, I don't want people to not turn up to the game because I know people like going to the footy. Uh, they don't want to give up their memberships because they've got seats, etc. Yeah. That, that's fine. If you if you if you're uh, into what we're talking about and you really want change, download the PDF. It's a it's a one pager. Um, take it to the footy with you. Take a pen with you, and just get the blokes either side of you and, and in front and behind you just to sign it. Uh, and pass it around, and then get it back to us on petition at aflcrowcast.com. I also, before we continue, I have to uh, thank our sponsors, Ryan at Smith Partners Real Estate. Sorry, Ryan, I, uh, in all the hubbub today, we've uh, forgotten to give you guys a shout-out, but uh, he does great work. Where are up they? There. They're up at Golden Grove, Golden Grove Village. Uh, anything to do oh. with property, mate, buy, sell, rent, you name it, they're into it. Um, and this, was that Smith Partners Real Estate? Smith Partners Real Estate. I think they just won an award too, so they're going great guns. Good work, guys. And Sorry, I couldn't, I, could, I couldn't hear. Was it Smith Partners Real Estate? Yes, uh, Smith Partners Real Estate up there at Golden Grove at Village. Gold, at Golden Grove. That's oh, right. Fantastic. Yeah. Love their support. Down to Earth Electrical. Um, also love their support too. They're everywhere, a donkey, everywhere. Uh, oh, all, really? your, all your electrical, all your air con- not up in Northern Territory probably, uh, oh. data, uh, get around them as well, down to earth electrical. Their numbers are on our Facebook uh, page and <laughs> on our website and uh, 
I might actually just flash them up now. Here we go. That's actually quite funny when you think about their name, Down to Earth Electrical, because if you've ever done, anyone has been involved with electricity, uh, one of the things you have to do is earth it, like you have yes. to put it in the ground to make sure it's not dangerous. So Down to Earth is like, hey, we're, we're sort of normal guys, but it's also like an insider pun. That's very clever. So, down to, so yeah. electrical. Yeah, yeah, Down to Earth Electrical. Electrical, oh, data and air conditioning. Uh, their number is uh, 82516402, actually. Um, yeah. And also, of course, we've got to thank Scorpus, who always supports the cast. Uh, go visit Hardware Unboxed if you've got any geeky stuff you want to know about. And last but certainly not least, all our patrons on Patreon. And uh, if you do want to support us on Patreon, uh, go to patreon.com forward slash AFL Crowcast or click the Patreon button on our website. But this isn't about us, this is about the club, and uh, we probably need to hopefully take some calls. Everyone's a little bit shy and a little bit quiet, but if you do Get on want there, guys. to, if you do want to vent, uh, now's the time to do it. Uh, the phones will be open for the rest of the, the cast. Uh, I understand it's, you know, 9.46 at night, and you're probably listening while your partner's asleep in bed next to you, so uh, that's cool. But yeah. if you do want to ring in, uh, the phones are now open. Pete, where do we um, go from look, here, mate? Or Donk, where do we go from here? Well, um, I think we just got to keep driving it. Oh, for me, the season twenty nineteen is dead, <laughs> and any any life in it is actually uh, a dead cat bounce. So, the worst thing that could I mean, I want to get as high as possible just to make you know Carlton not get a great pick. So there's there's a bit of that. So, but you know, there's no illusions here that this uh, this playing group isn't cooked. Um, we need to be you know. What does twenty nine? What does twenty twenty look like? You know, who's not here? Who do we trade away for good picks? How quickly do we burn the house down and rebuild? Um, let's play every kid we can in the next four weeks. You know, let's let's get everything we can out of this list. Well, for the <clears throat> for the next four weeks, there's no question what's going to happen, and that's it. Um, Pike has nailed his colours to the experienced mass, and he will now be. You can you can absolutely get set that he'll be recalling. The likes of uh, Dougie, Bryce Gibbs, um, <clears throat> most likely Source if Brian doesn't come up with a concussion. Yeah, I thought that was in. interesting that they've got him on the concussion <clears throat> protocol. It yeah, seems so just that, in time for finals. I, I think so, and I, so I think that really, you know, um, Don's all in with the uh, with his, um, you know, the guys he's stuck with for the last three years, mm. and so I think we'll be looking at them to bail him out. And um, that's uh, that they're the kind of changes that we'll see against St Kilda. We certainly won't see an influx of the young kids, I don't think. Well, he's certainly given them every opportunity at the expense of the young lads, haven't he? Because, you know, if they talk about yeah. Bryce having such a good game and Douglas having a good game. Well, where was poor old Chase and Galooch and all them playing? On the fringes. All these old yeah. fellas Galooch were playing. playing the wing. Yeah. So, you know, I mean, come on. This isn't player development. I mean, we probably need to touch on uh, Rowie's rumour rumor about Seven wanting to leave. Uh, I've had about four people uh, DM me on Twitter today saying that they've heard Foggs want, wants to go. They talk, we spoke about Greenwood uh, being uh, not offered a new deal, uh, Keith being low-balled. Uh, they're talking about Hardigan and, and all the rest. But really the one that disappoints me is, is Darcy Fogarty. If yeah. if Darcy Nothing Fogarty goes, trail. if Darcy Fogarty goes, uh, the membership should just burn bloody football park down, because that'll well, be can't, such though. an. He's got a two years contract. Ah, he can still ask for a trade, Macca. Oh, well, you can ask, but the, but the club's just got to say no. Oh, well, that's right. But if he wants to go, is the point. If he wants to go, if he asks the mm. club for a trade. That's bad enough. That means he's at, that means his heart's not in it. That means that he feels he's been hard done by. You know, well, I think he'll be playing regularly next year. Well, we'll see about that, won't we? Um, if he wants to, yeah, I'll, put, I'll, put, I'll, I'll put this out. If he wants to go, if he wants to go, and I'm just saying, if he wants to go, if he says I want to be traded out of here, let's just set aside the ramifications and, and, and what's caused that, which we've talked about tonight. This is just a speculative, just off the top of my head, just suddenly came to me. Would you do pick three and Fogarty for Luco? Would you do that? No. 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 Oh, yeah. That's too expensive, Pete. Luco hasn't showed, hasn't showed enough either. yet. Luco for pick three, indeed. But you, you wouldn't get him. For, you, you won't get him for pick three. 
Yeah, I, well, well, it's just it's too much. He went for pick two when he's had a year of de- he will have had a year of development. So no, you won't get him for pick two. No, I don't. I don't want Darcy Fogarty away from this club. I don't think. No, 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 I, no, I don't no, 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 definitely not, definitely not. You know, and I don't. I don't think tra- trading away someone with Fogarty's raw talent plus a top five pick is worth a speculative uh, trade in Luca. And we all know what Luca did as a junior, but we also know that junior form often doesn't translate, particularly with bigger fellas. So, um, yeah, no, nah, I, wouldn't no doing, I wouldn't be doing that. So the what other, would you do? What would you do? If, if he wants out, what do you do? You trade He'll come him. over the end of next year. Next year. Mm. He's not signing. He, they put a contract extension in front of him. He's not signing. Uh, the, bloke, uh, the big boy from uh, Victoria, he's not signing either. Um, Rankin signed, but they gave him a huge inflated salary, apparently, to, to sign it. And he's happy to sell his soul for money up there. Well, that, that's fair enough. But uh, I think Luco wants to come home, and I think he'll come home at the end of uh, next year. And, uh, well, we'll work out what we give then. But um, um, he won't be coming home this year. No. No. Um- I think I think if Fogg wants to go, you have to trade him. Um, no, un, no. Un, no, you have to, because have what's to. the what's the point in you, every day that you don't play him, he loses trade value. You um, talk to the guy and you work out what his problem is, and uh, yeah, Macca, that's and, that's all well and good in normal circumstances, but think about that question in the context of the current culture that we're talking about at the Adelaide Football Club. Because the only reason he wants to go is the same reason that Jake Lever wanted to go and the same reason that bloody Jared Lyon wants to, wanted to go and the same reason that all these other blokes want to go is because there's no buy-in with the football club. They don't identify with the culture. It's what Phil was saying earlier, you know, there's one thing to play to want to play for the, for the Adelaide Football Club and, and, and another thing to be completely committed. I'm hopeful that out of all this protesting by the supporters that something might come out of it. I'm not saying I've got my uh, life depending upon it, but I'm hoping gonna, that something comes out of it. And It's going uh, to happen, Macca. It's going to happen, Macca. I think, I think it's got to happen. And, yeah, I do, be, and I do think that be, the way the chap was talking, I just thought at the end of his um, defence that he was so shaky that he actually made a comment that we just might do that. They um, are on the wall. We we will be, pin uh, them. There'll be a sacrifice of one, maybe two people. Yep, maybe, I agree maybe with you, Peter. And I, that'll be it. There'll be a I sacrifice for the masses, and they'll be hung out on a, on a stubby pole. Yep. And we can all feast and feed, and that'll be it. Yeah, but this podcast won't be falling for that shit. Right? If oh, they if they throw Pike under the bus, or if they, you know, sack Camperelli or someone or other, uh, that's not that's not enough. Uh, and that's not what this club needs. Uh, so, but I, I, that's what I suspect as well, Peter. Un, unless we maintain the rage, uh, maintain that, the rage, and for that Sorry. we need people to to sign on. And not only with us, you don't have to sign our pissy position if you don't want to. Email the club, you know, ring them up, get on social Shake media, the cage, guys. You know, it doesn't have to be through us. This isn't about the Crowcast. We're just providing a platform, but. You know, if you feel strongly about it, do what you feel you need to do. You know, drop your membership if you feel, if you feel like doing that. Yeah. You know, but do something because if you don't do anything, then you can't complain. That's that's yeah. my point. Um, the and other the other one, don't sorry to cut you off, mate. The other one, yeah. the other scenario I worry about, and it's not so much about the quality of the. Well, hang on, well let me just say it, and then I'll try and qualify it. When I went to uh, Eddie's book signing a couple of weeks ago, and I think I mentioned this on the cast, Eddie was adamant that he had this year of his contract to play out, and he wanted to he wanted to play two more after that. Right, so Eddie, in his mind, he's got at least three years to go in his career. Now, Eddie and David Teague, very close, very close, and there are whispers, whispers in my inbox, whispers on TV in the media about the the possibility of Eddie Betts finishing his career at the Carlton Football Club. Now would now that's not about that's not about Eddie in terms of the loss to our team because you could argue that Eddie is kind of reaching the twilight but culturally and from a club perspective there wouldn't be a 
bigger loss of a player since Tony Modra went to Fremantle. Would you agree? Yeah, but I, but I think he came out this afternoon and denied it, uh, Fane. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. We'll see, Macca. Yeah. And I'm just putting hypotheticals the out there. But I'm only repeating what, what I heard this afternoon. Yeah, sure. And, and look, could be right. But if Adelaide don't want to offer Eddie another contract at 550000 because he wants another contract, if they won't offer him another contract at 550000 or even 400000 then what do you think is going to happen? Eddie might want to stay here, but will he stay here? I don't know. And to me, that'll be, that'll be as big a loss culturally for the soul of the team, for the soul of the club, as when Mods left to go to Frio. That'll be just about it as far as the club's concerned. There, there'll be a long time coming back from that. Yep. That's actually the subject of who we think the club may get rid of next year and who we think the club should get rid of next year would make a very interesting podcast, I think, Bing. Well, that's probably one coming up. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, let's, not start it. let's not start it now at 10 o'clock. No, no, no not now. Come. No, not now. Look, not now, but hey, no, another day. Uh, I, I feel like I don't think we're. I think we're being fairly level. I think we're being fairly even about this. We're not ranting. There's a few people on various mm. channels. Uh, we've had a couple of comments on our on our Facebook chat saying that we've jumped the gun and we should support them and you know yeah. and all that sort of stuff. And you know that's fair enough. People, no, look, people entitled to their opinion, Don. Well, uh, Hitler had supporters too. Well, it's, no, it's just it's just like. But we're not we're not at week one. Like if you've been listening to us over the last few weeks, and if you've listened to us over a long period of time, like I am Mr. Rosie. Like it was very hard for me to be able to criticize the club in any way, shape, or form because I thought we we're going okay. Like, but geez, once you turn though, mate, you really turn. Yeah, you did, oh, mate. Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was oh, a, a one eighty. I'm not here to fuck spiders. I'm not here to fuck spiders. I make, <laughs> I make. I make serious decisions about things, and of we were going okay. We were, we were, we were not very far away from a premiership win. We had a solid list. We had some things that weren't going okay. Like you hold the course, and until it breaks down completely, you keep it there because it hasn't broken down. For me, we actually crossed that Rubicon in round four this year. Rubicon. I, I had a bit of. We uh, yeah. Well, it's, it, I, Pete can explain that, but um, uh, we crossed that. We crossed that around round four. Cube, it's, it's a little coloured yeah. cube, isn't it? Yeah, we, <laughs> we, yeah. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> that that in my fifty-one years, I still have not been able to solve once. Yeah, God damn. Um, <laughs> um, uh, you know, we crossed it. We actually crossed it really early in the year, and then there was a dead cat bounce that I that I drank the Kool Aid on, which I think a few of us drank the Kool Aid on, and uh, and then they fell apart. So you know, jumping the gun. You know, it was middle of the last year, I reckon. Jumping the gun was earlier on, but the we this is this is a trend, not an event. This is multiple failures continually happening with the same crap being trotted out, the same mistakes, the same sh- like horrible selection things going on, and the fact that we're not even building any kids, we're building no future, we're squandering it because they want to leave. We've we've broken the last generation we're about to break the next generation we're actually going to put ourselves into a 10 15 year hole if we don't do something right now do something do something uh i'd just like to say that macca's comment on the chat was fantastic he just said donkey that uh, all the uh, spiders on the planet breathe a huge sigh of relief <laughs> <laughs> Uh, <laughs> uh, thanks, guys. <laughs> I didn't know that you didn't know you that way inclined, Dom. But you know, no. everyone, oh, everyone's of their own. Uh, all right. So, all right. Let, let's just uh, round this off. Uh, what do we think is going to happen against the Saints? Are we going to have a, a famous rousing victory, or are we going to see uh, a team in turmoil? Oh, we have oh, a I famous think- rousing victory. I think I think again it's it's, it's going to be really really difficult. To, let's you know being sensible. I think it's going to be very very difficult assignment. I'm not just saying that because you've got extremely astute coach of St Kilda, Brett Ratton, um, and he would have uh, done some very very careful study of the last few games that the Crows have played. And um, as you quite rightly pointed out, Fiend, in terms of you know the, a lot of the teams that have figured us out, um, Brett Ratton is to my mind one of the best. Um, coach is going around. Uh, I think he just hasn't had the opportunity to show it. 
Um, so I think that they will be all over us. And I think that if we do get a win, it will not be an easy win. It'll be close to the bone. Well, yeah, it's really hard to stick your neck out, isn't it? Um, I will. I'm hoping that there'll be some reaction by the players. Um, if the players have any uh, self-respect, they will come out and play a decent game this week. But then I thought that last week. So I may be just clutching at straws or looking at spiders or whatever I'm doing. Um, but uh, I will say that Adelaide will scrape in by about 18 points, 30 to 18 points in that range. Donkey? Um, we will we will get over the line by X amount of points. It'll, we'll, there'll be people coming out with puffed up chests looking like that we are on top of the world again and all our problems are solved. Yep. Um, and... Uh, and uh, we'll all pretend to drink the Kool Aid and go on, um, but just uh, just when that does happen, guys, everyone listening, that's when we need to double down on our on our um, insistence of the reforms of the club, is so they don't think they've get away with a cheap win against a bottom four club, and uh, and all is fine. We need to double down. That is the point when they think we will go away. That's when we need to come back threefold, fourfold, fivefold. We cannot let this stop. No Rubicon in that one. We've crossed the Rubicon. The, the Rubicon's 18, 18Ks in the click behind us, mate. Like, <laughs> um, Look, Saints uh, beat Melbourne in contested ball. They beat them in clearances. Uh, they uh, look all right against Ratton. Uh, they look a bit faster. They're moving the ball a bit better. Um, uh, all the hallmarks of a resurgent Carlton, if you ask me. Uh, Ratton's two zip since he took over. Uh, so we've had the dead cat bounce. Uh, Saints traditionally don't travel well here unless it's a semi-final. Um, <laughs> <laughs> fucking hell. Let's talk, so about, talk about fragile. Jesus Christ. I need therapy <laughs> for this. Um, so, I look, I think we'll see a, a spirited performance from Adelaide because they'll have a bit to prove. I think we'll see a couple of token... Uh, fan pleasing inclusions. I think we'll see Eddie bet back. I think we might see Bryce back. Um, yeah, got forty touch. Yeah. What about Ottens? How's he going? Can we get him back soon? Yeah, oh, he's still a bit young. Um, yeah. But I, I think I think we're going to go down on a tight one. I think we'll go down by a couple of goals. Yeah, I'm going to tip the Saints. All right. Uh, now, Donkey, we haven't done your competitions this week, and quite frankly, no one gives no, a guess. shit. <laughs> no, no, it's 10 o'clock. It's 10 o'clock. So I'll wind up by saying, look, uh, thanks everyone for their support so far. Um, don't forget, if you want to sign the petition, aflcrowcast.com, just click the link on the top article there. Um, uh, there's plenty of links around on Facebook and Twitter if uh, you can't find it. Um, if you don't want to sign it online or you can't or you want to get some mates to sign it, there's a PDF link at the top of the article on uh, our website. Uh, so just click the link, download the PDF, get them signed and send your signed petitions to petition at aflcrowcast.com. Um, yeah. We will send it to the club at some stage. I'd really like to send it with a shitload of signatures. But obviously, you know, we can't wait forever. So the quicker we get up to a really meaningful number, the better. Uh, so please get on board if you feel strongly about this. Um, we've let the club off the hook too many times, in, in our opinion, uh, and enough's enough. So get on board with that. Uh, thanks very much to Smith Partners Real Estate, Down to Earth uh, Electrical, Scorpus' uh, Hardware Unbox, all our patrons. And thank you most of all to the people who hook into us every week. Uh, we've hit a 1,000 comments on uh spreaker wow. so well done well done gentlemen great uh some of them were even worth reading um <laughs> <laughs> uh, and we've also had uh, a really good uh set of listeners on facebook live as well so thank you everyone for joining us on facebook live um and look i think we'll wind that up pete thanks very much maca thanks mate Yes. Thanks yeah, very much, Donkey. All. Now, Cam and I will be around pre-game for the rev up, so keep an eye out for that one. Uh, my son's probably going to blow his lid as well, so that'll be fun. In the meantime, yeah. uh, stick with us. Uh, thanks very much for your support. We'll see you Thursday night for the rev up. Goodbye. <laughs>